Hey guys, Robert here from Master Guitar Academy. And today I'm back with another triads lesson for you. As you probably know, I love to teach triads because they are so important, so powerful and so useful. I call these triad voicings Eric Johnson triads. And that's simply because I've heard him use these types of triads frequently. So what I'm going to do today is to show you how you can harmonize the G major scale or we can look at it as the e Aeolian mode, they have the same notes, using these Eric Johnson triads. And before we get started, make sure that you download the lesson files by clicking the link in the YouTube description. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, you really should, because I put out a lot of useful material here on a frequent basis. Now let's take a closer look at how this works. I'm going to start with E minor and then I'm going to harmonize the E Aeolian mode or G major, the same thing, using the triads that already exist within this scale. So I'm going to start by playing through all these triads one by one and highlight on the screen which triad it is. And then I'll show you the details of how you grip these voicings. Now, as you probably already know, a triad is constructed by taking the first, the third, and the fifth note from the scale or mode. If we do that to the E Aeolian, we get E, G, and B. That is an E minor chord, an E minor triad. And then we can harmonize this mode or scale by just moving uh, each of these notes from the triad up the fretboard. And you get these chords that fit in with this scale. That's called harmonizing. And that's what I'm doing here. But I'm going to show you these cool Eric Johnson style voicings, which are a little bit different. If we go back to this one that I first mentioned here, if you look at the intervals, we have root note, we have minor third, and we have fifth on top. And they exist within the same octave. But when we play this voicing, which is the first one I'm going to show you, it sounds cooler, right? It's still just a triad. But what we're doing now is that we're starting on the root note, E, playing the 5, and minor 3rd now up here. And the minor 3rd is an octave above, right? Because we have, the minor 3rd would be open G string. That's part of the E minor chord, right? Or here, same thing. But now, since I have the 5 here, I can't play open G string, obviously. So I, I take that minor 3rd from open G string and move it up here, an octave higher. And you get that sound. And then we just move the hand up the fretboard, adjust accordingly to find the next chord. We get that sound. That's how it works. All right, so the first one, E minor. That's the E minor triad. The next one we get to is the F sharp diminished triad. Then G major triad. A minor triad, B minor triad, C major triad, D major triad, and we're back up here 
with the E minor triad. So, how do you memorize these voicings? Well, you have a few options. Of course, you can take uh, a favorite tune of yours that you like to play, and instead of playing the usual, maybe bar chords or open chords, you, uh, you switch them out for these voicings instead. Or you can take uh, the metronome and create a little mini progression, something like... I just played uh, E minor, D major, B minor, and C major. Simply use your imagination, be creative, and explore these voicings in different keys as well. And here's a useful tip for you. Let's say that we're looking at this from the perspective of G major. So we only have three major triads to worry about, three minor. And then that odd one out, that diminished triad, which is the one we probably use the least. So the one chord being G major triad, the four and the five chords would be C and D. They have the same grip, same voicing. And then E minor, the E minor is the sixth chord. The two chord is A minor. And the three chord is B minor. And those grips are the same. E minor, A minor, B minor. And G major, C major, and D major. So that way you only have two grips that you're really thinking about the major and the minor. And that we have that odd one out, right? The diminished one. So there you have it, Eric Johnson triads, or wide interval triads. Now, if you really want to dig deeper into this topic, practice two back and tracks, and have a lot of uh, different exercises for how to really know how to find these triads on any strings all over the fretboard, you should consider joining my website. I provide sound slice for all the exercises, which is a tablature and notation window side by side with the video. So you can see my fingers on the fretboard at the same time as you can see the tablature or notation. And you can also slow down any sections you want and you can A, B loop any section as well. In other words, it's a really, really powerful and effective way to learn. Did you like this lesson? Give me a thumbs up, add a comment, and of course, subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on my next lesson. Mm -hmm.